pre-season testing again, just three days this year, but still plenty of time for the important correlation work and uh, for our favourite gadgets to come out again. So we're going to try and explain some. So first off, we've got the Aero Rake. This is the old classic, really. The, uh, the cheese grater, the big garden fence that's full of tiny little sensors. You can see these little probes, they're all over this alloy carbon printed aero rake. This is a rear diffuser one, so this will go just behind the diffuser, right at the back of the car. And all of these little keel probes will measure the airflow that rushes straight against that off the back of the car. And uh, they're all linked around the back to this wiring, which will go on the end of the uh, front wing end plate. There's a box that will be put in there. All the information then is collected and uh, the aerodynamicist can see that in computerized form exactly the airflow off in this case the rear diffuser now we see also many of these off the front wheel wake for example or uh, just in front of the rear wheel off the side pods the barge board area they're a critical measurement to try and understand exactly what's going on with the aero of the car after the event here the team can correlate exactly what they're seeing here with a similar model in the wind tunnel and that gives them a good view of, uh, of what they're doing, how the real car is working in relation to the, to the wind tunnel car. And then that gives them a great idea of how to develop that car in the future as well. And they know they're on the right track. So clearly this is a great tool for understanding the, uh, the airflow over certain parts of the car. Um, but there are limitations as well. It's big, it's bulky. This one weighs about three kilograms but they're all in various shapes and sizes, depending on what the team wants to learn and uh, how big they want to put the, the rake around whichever part of the car they're measuring the airflow from. It also takes a while to, uh, to put on and off. It's not, uh, not so simple. And you can damage them by bouncing over curbs if drivers are attacking. You need to drive with a bit of caution. And that's why usually you see these pretty much only on installation laps at the start of a test day and typically with some constant speed runs as well. The drivers on the, on the straights can change the, uh, the steering wheel setting to a, a setting that will basically be like cruise control. And the data's perfect, but clearly the performance isn't. And so therefore, great testing tool, but not very practical for, for much more performance running. And that is correlated in relation to this as well. This is the pitot tube that is fitted to the panel just above the nose cone of the car. And uh, this measures the airflow, the difference between the moving air pressure and the static air pressure in the pitot tube. And it, it effectively measures the, the airflow over the car and the wind is the gadget that's given many people many excuses when the engineers can see a gust of wind cause an incident or something like that. That's coming from the pitot tube. We have seen in the past testing in yonder year high pitot tubes with the tall mast that came off the, uh, the top of the roll hoop. That's no longer deemed necessary. We've not seen it in years, and this one does the job just fine. And then we get to our another old classic of ours, the Flowviz paint. Pretty simple. A very bright color paint. It's a fluorescent powder mixed with a, a light oil that is painted liberally across the, any surface that you want to get a, get a reading on. Painted over the rear wing, for example, just before the car goes out on track. The car goes out, the oil evaporates very quickly, and you're left with a, a colorful residue that pretty much clearly shows the, uh, the airflow over the car. And again, aerodynamicists will take photos of this and uh, try and correlate it with what they've learned before. The good thing about this, it's not so bulky. It doesn't take long at all to put on the car, and you can run it on a short performance run, and it's just fine. So you see this a little bit more during the year as well whereas the aero rake itself is limited to, uh, to those installation laps. Then we come to these. These are uh, heat sensitive stickers of various degrees. So these blue ones are for lower temperatures and uh, these yellow ones are for higher temperatures. And basically you can see on these blue ones, there's a black ink in here that's gonna uh, just rise when the temperature gets hotter. And when the car comes back in, the, uh, the mechanics can see exactly what temperature each component has got to. And this is mainly for reliability reasons. You can put them on the gearbox, the brake calipers, the, the rear wishbones, parts of the bodywork, anywhere you're worried that the cooling might not be good enough and you might have a weakness. These heat sensitive stickers give the team a good idea straight away on, uh, on where they can find a problem before it's a big one out on track or maybe in a race. 
So there we have it, these are our main testing staples and uh, certainly we're going to see a lot of these throughout the week. Data gathering so important, correlation to all the hard work the team have done back at base at the wind tunnel so important and it puts them in a great footing for the year ahead.